licensing. Don't, don't go anywhere yet. The word sounds very serious and legal. And it is. But after this video, you'll be more than capable and know exactly what CC licensing is and how to apply it to your work and why they're important to you right now, whether you are a content creator or game developer or a creator of assets such as music or graphics for video game development. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Good morning. I am Amalgamash. Today, I want to spread some awareness on licensing and give you some quick education. This is especially good information for those of you who create your own assets and you want to make them available for game developers to use. Even if you want to create games or video content as a hobby and never worry about marketing or getting paid, this is still necessary info that you can use. And at the very least, you can keep it in mind for past projects that you'd like to bring out, but you're not sure about copyright status, things like that, current projects and future projects. The best part about all of this is that applying a license like what I'm about to show you is completely free. As a game developer or content creator, you may decide you'd like to take advantage of free music or graphics or even video clips to put in your game or your video. You might also be thinking about purchasing assets for your project and you're not clear about what kind of license they come with. You might not even think to ask the question, what kind of license does this come with? But it is a necessary question. You may also be worried about infringing on copyrights, which is important because after all, putting copyrighted music or graphics in your work can be grounds for bad things like a YouTube strike or a ban on Twitch or a DMCA, a C&D letter from Nintendo and repeat offenses can mean content takedowns, account deletions, and lawsuits. And well, we don't want any of that. If I want to use assets for my game or music for my videos like this, or this, or even, I always check the license they come with, and if they don't come with a license, I don't use them, period. That's because I'd like my videos to stay up until the sun boils away the oceans of our planet. YouTube will still be around by then, right? Of course it will. People will be making NFTs of 8th dimension blogs about it as it happens. I don't want to have to ever worry about taking any of them down because of using music that doesn't belong to me or music that I wouldn't have the license to use. And the same goes for games, especially fan-made games that are at risk of being taken down at any moment. Now, a disclaimer before we go along, I'm not a lawyer. Lawyers don't have long hair. Deciding to attach a license to your work is an important and in many cases irreversible decision. You should put forth some reasonable effort researching before deciding to do that. Uh, if you think that watching a video on YouTube about it is enough, great, but ultimately it is your responsibility. So the least I can ask you to do is go to creativecommons.org forward slash licenses and read up about them there, but I'm going to be explaining some stuff to you in a short form so that you don't have to worry about doing that right now and you can get an, a feel for it so that you can go into it with a little bit of familiarity. So what is Creative Commons? Creative Commons, or CC for short, is a license type that covers a lot of different use cases. It was created with creators in mind and it grants them a way to make very descriptive how their work can be used. In all cases, it is as simple as including a text file with your distributed work. That is the download or the zip file or um, physical media if you're mailing out your work that contains special text that describes the license and oftentimes links to the Creative Commons website and to that license type in particular. Something that has a CC license can usually be used by someone else in their work. Whether you are using art or sound recordings or composed music for a game or video, and the extent to which that asset can be used is identified by the name of the license. There are a lot of license types, each with its own level of freedom that it grants the user. So what I'd like to do is actually read off verbatim what these types do. So if you check out the Creative Commons website and you check out their uh, chooser, their license chooser, we have a lot of different licenses. I don't want this to feel overwhelming for you, but basically if you are making assets and you would like video game creators to use them, you want those creators to feel safe using your assets. What you are really trying to do is give people a license to use your work. And if you charge money for it, then that's fine too. You're still charging them money not for the work. You're not selling them the work and, and saying that it's theirs now. You're selling them a license to use the work. 
in the ways that you say is allowable. And this is important because if I, as a creator, am going to purchase your work, or even if you're going to give your work to me for free, rather give a license to your work, uh, of your work to me for free, I want to be able to know exactly what I can do with it. And that license makes things more official. It makes things kind of immutable. It says, I'm giving you legally, for all intents and purposes, the permission to do X, Y, and Z, and I can't take it back because this license is attached to it. Now as a creator, I feel safe. I feel like I can use this work in my work as long as I hold to the terms of the license. So this is the license chooser. We've got a couple of panels here, actually four. I will look at the bottom two in just a minute. Your choices on this panel will update the other panels on this page. So do you want to allow adaptations of your work to be shared? While they have a question mark that you can click on that does tell you legally what the licensor, that's you, is permitting others to do, uh, it, it actually spells out for you what it is you are and are not permitting to do. They don't really give you examples of what this means, but you can choose yes, no, or yes, as long as others share alike. And you can choose to prohibit or allow commercial uses of your work. So if you were to say, create an instrumental track, are you going to allow adaptations of that work to be shared? So if somebody needs to change that track for any reason, perhaps they need to speed it up or slow it down. These are adaptations, these are changes. Would you like them to be able to share that work? If the answer is yes, then they are able to take your work and transform it in some way. It still remains your work but they are allowed to distribute their transformation of your work. If you say no, then they're not allowed to do that. They could make adaptations of your work, but they cannot redistribute it. They cannot share that work. Yes, as long as others share alike. So this is where things get a little bit more complicated. This is saying, yes, they're allowed to distribute the adaptation of your work, but they have to make sure that they allow other people, third parties now, to share distributions in the exact same manner so somebody else can take from their version of your work and change it up a little bit more and now share it so it just becomes an infinite share train and this can be a really really great thing if you aren't too worried about exclusivity and you just want to empower people with creation and motivation to create inspiration and things like that but if you're more of the exclusive side then you may say no and you can see the panel on the right changes in appearance. It is actually changing the license type based on which one of these options we pick. The bottom question asks if you'd like to allow commercial uses of your work. You can actually specify whether or not you want to allow licensees to make money off of your work. They don't need to distribute the work itself they might wish to incorporate it into another work, say your music into a video game. But if you're saying that they're not allowed to commercialize that work, then they can't sell that video game. They, it has to be a free project that they're distributing. So those are just some examples of what you can allow people to do and what these things mean. And you can see the license type changing further by placing a symbol of a dollar sign with a cross through it when we select no. So these license types all have their own unique names. They're kind of long. This is the attribution 4.0 International. This is the Attribution No Derivatives 4.0 International and the Attribution Share Alike 4.0 International. The 4.0 won't change. That is specific legal verbiage in the license that is telling them legally exactly what they can and cannot do. It's sort of like giving a definition to this name. And then if we don't allow commercial uses of the work, it adds the uh, non-commercial wordage and symbol into the license type. So if you are an asset creator and you're trying to get out there and be the most visible, then what you might like to do is create a body of work to distribute that is as free as possible for others to take. If you want to do that, it would be a very, very safe license for 
people like content creators and video game creators to be able to trust and use and help gain you that exposure as long as they're crediting you. So you could say yes to allow adaptations of your work to be shared and you could say yes to allowing commercial uses of your work. And then we just have an attribution 4.0. So this license allows somebody to do anything they want as long as they attribute you in other words as long as they give you credit all right so if we scroll down now we have one more panel that helps others attribute you by filling out some fields that will add some metadata to this HTML. And then this panel gives you a link and a picture of the symbol to attach to your work so you can let people know exactly what it is you are sharing. You've got a normal icon and a compact icon. That's Creative Commons and it's really that simple. Uh, again, applying it or any license type your work is as easy as including a text file with that information. And even though the spirit of the licenses is explicitly to be shared amongst creators without fear of legal repercussions, uh, so long as the user follows the license requirements. And even though it is free to use the license, you can still charge money for that license. So if you are a music creator who doesn't care what people do with your music as long as they pay you first, and you're not worried about royalties, you just want that one-time payment, you can sell this license to other people. And then as long as you have allow commercial uses of your work checked, they can sell their transformations of your work to other people and take the money. They don't owe you anything. So everything we just read is something you can still charge money for as the creator. Now, what other license types exist? There are a lot. Uh, the most popular ones that I know of are Creative Commons. The MIT license, this is worth going to opensource.org slash licenses slash MIT and, and reading the licensed text. And this is a great way to distribute stuff and say, this is free, it's free, there's no royalties, you can have it. Permission is hereby granted free of charge to any person obtaining a copy of this software, associated documentation, files, blah, 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 without limitation, the rights to use, copy, modify, merge, publish, distribute, sublicense, and or sell copies of the software. It is a great license if you're just trying to get your free game out there. And finally, as a bonus, let's look and find out exactly what public domain means. Public domain is the most free license of all, although it is wrong to call it a license. It's not a license. Public domain is even better than a license. It is uh, free of copyright. And you can do anything with a public domain work without attributing or owing royalties to a creator at all. Case in point, in a short story from my cringy deviant art days, I was once a sad boy. Wait, I'll just show you. There we go. It's my deviant art. Yay. Wow. Dude. No. Dude. <laughs> I have aged so poorly or so well. We were in line at the Roxy to see Darren Gray. Look at that 768p photo. A sad boy. See, I was edgy. So I used to post pictures and art and lyrics and blogs on my lonely deviant art. A few of these pictures were wallpapers that I made using John Tenniel's art from the book Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. Uh, a mod, or a poor excuse for a mod, took one of my first ever wallpapers down saying that it violated copyright. They had no idea what they were talking about, of course, so I kindly informed them that the image was in public domain, to which they replied, hmm, I checked and you're right. Well, make better art, please. It was reinstated. I or you or anyone could easily sell prints of that kind of art though and make money and not owe royalties to anyone ever and never be sued. All right, you've got this far. It's time for an important stipulation to that. As we all know, Disney has more than once created films based on Alice in Wonderland. Since Alice in Wonderland is public domain front to back, does that mean anybody can use the Disney version of Alice in Wonderland or any of the characters in those works? No. While it's perfectly fine to use the source material and even make your own inspired work, you would not be able to, without license or permission from Disney, use Disney's version of the public domain character. Disney's Alice is a distinct interpretation of the work. In fact, although most Sherlock Holmes work has been in the public domain, for a long time a new movie about Sherlock's little sister came under legal scrutiny when another company decided their interpretation of that character was being used. If you want some real homework, go research whether the works of H.P. Lovecraft are in the public domain. You'll be surprised at how varied the answers are. But as a spoiler, uh, the man himself did everything he could to 
be read by everybody as, as freely as possible. He wanted everybody to read his work. Even though some of his works were published after 1923, they are generally shared and distributed as if they are in the public domain. And someone out there ought to have the rights to the last few years worth of stuff, but whoever does is allowing it all to be used with the spirit in which the author intended. So that's great. It is worth noting that new things enter the public domain every day, and it is only a matter of time before Steamboat Willie finally drops in for everybody to use legally in their own media, such as their RPG Maker games. Well, I hope you learned something, or at least became interested in going down the copyright and licensure rabbit hole. If you become inclined to begin distributing licenses with your own work, that is fantastic, and I've done my job here. Uh, just remember that if you do that, no backsies. Let me know what you thought down below and how you might find this information useful. And I'll see you in the next video. I hope you have a great day. Until next time, bye for now.